so much for joining us uh, today is the fifth day day five of our 60 day campaign trail to keep the evil out of your land and then just to before i start i don't know whether you guys can see me from uh facebook i don't know I don't know whether you can see me because so many things has been done to, to shut us down. A number of people cannot see us via Facebook. Mm. <clears throat> A number of people can see us via Facebook. I don't know what what they have been. So it's not. So nobody can see us. I can tell you for a fact. It's very hard for people to see us. There is one sh Mr. Shego who has joined us. Can you like and love? these so that you can so that you can be able to press please love and press please love. so you love and share this And it's not always very clear. That's a big problem when I use this. Mr. Ofeso, uh, can you help us to remove this people? Wendy, I just want to be sure that we are good to go on Facebook. Yeah, thank you guys, if you can see. And then I think we're massively being flat. Because yeah. I think we're being flat. So I'm going to We've been flagged seriously, but you just have to love and share this. If you can kindly do that, that would be great. 
Thank you, folks. On our day five, I'm going to be talking about the 14,528 Yoruba that were killed between 1962 and 1964 by the coalition government of uh, Mr. Tafa Balewa and uh, Namdi Azikwe. So many Yoruba do not know a lot about this. And I'm going to talk about May 29 as well. You look at the, the date, because the majority of the young Yoruba who have no clue about that date. So we're going to talk about this. Folks, kindly help to love and share this so that we can, we can ask at least, yeah, Facebook is unreliable. They keep, uh, yesterday they, un they unpublished Facebook while we were live. I think few people can see us. Majority are not allowed to see us. But people can, you can tell people to come via YouTube. And there's a new, there's a YouTube sent us notification. And this Igbo have been massively reporting my YouTube channel. So there is a message. Some of you might have seen it. There's a message that will pop up before you start watching me live, asking you whether you want to watch me live or you want to block me permanently. I think Facebook, uh, YouTube may have come up with that idea to stop the evil massively reporting every of my page and channel. So that's what I, I, I believe that they are trying to do. So they don't want the truth out. And it is very important, very, very important to know what has happened in the past. You observe the present so that you can pre predict the future. The future is very easy to predict. You just need to understand what has gone wrong or what has happened in the past. And now that you are alive, you observe the present sent phenomenon. So you use this tool to predict the future. You don't have to be a prophet or prophetess to see the future. You just need to understand what has happened in the past and what is currently happening now. And you use the tool to predict the future. In predicting the future for the Yoruba nation, you see, the Libra in Yoruba land are behaving truth to time. You know, the Libra have adopted restructuring and the agitation for the Doha Republic as a past time things to do to get to deceive the Yoruba nation. That is what the majority of the Libra are now doing. You see, during the election that has just gone past, so many Yoruba groups spring up using fanciful Yoruba name. They were erecting posters all across Yoruba towns and cities, calling for restructuring, but they were doing it in support of the Yoruba PDP, who are Libra. Yoruba PDP has never for once been the voice for the demand for Odudua Republic or the return to regional government. Yoruba PDP member are predominantly Libras who just are looking for money. That is it. They are just looking for power to enjoy themselves. They do not intend to do anything good for the Yoruba nation. So they will, they have now adopted this agitation for who to do our republic to deceive the people. And then for me as an individual, majority of these Libra, they come out to attack me. They initially wanted me to work with them. And I said, look, I know there are two groups in Yoruba land. The conservatives have always been pro Yoruba from day one. But you, Libra, you're not. You work with the Hebo, but the Hebo don't support the Yoruba nation. But you want to continue to work with them. So you use them to gain power in Yoruba land so that you can suppress and subjugate Yoruba. I can tell you for a fact that the majority of those who are shouting the Dua Republic, who are shouting restructuring, who are Yoruba, believe you me, they are Libra using that as a gimmick to get your vote, particularly during the election. Now, after the election, they are no more, they are nowhere to be found. They were using the call for restructuring to lobby Atiku and get money from him. They said the PDP, Atiku is going to restructure. There's no full Fulani on this planet who will, who will return Nigeria back to regional government, including Buhari. There's no Igbo on this planet who wants a return to regional government. Don't let us fucking bullshit ourselves. 
So when you know what has happened in the past, you observe what is happening presently, you can easily predict the future. That's why I don't like to work with the Libra. And there's so many things that they say to us. They say, ah, Yoruba should not fight each other. In every society, there's always two camps. In Yoruba society, there will forever be two camps. We must not pretend as if all the Yoruba must do the same thing. No. But the conservative must be more than the Libra. There's too many Libras in Yoruba land that we are not trying to wake up their mind so that we can have majority Libra and conservative rather. Too many Libras in Yoruba land, and this has to be addressed. So many, many people that you see Shah the Dua Republic are actually Libra. They did that for election. Do you see them doing the same thing now? No. When election is coming, they will come out again and declare for the Dua Republic. There are some youth group who have formed themselves into a youth group. They're just doing it for money. You're a youth group. Doing it for money. I don't want to mention names except something that I have done research on my own. That's when I'm going to mention names. But uh, this popular Yoruba group, they were erecting billboards across Yoruba land shouting in favor of Odudua Republic, shouting in favor of restructuring. They're actually working for the PDP and they're actually using it as a gimmick on a tip to just get his money. These guys are not committed. So I was privileged to a private conversation that some of these guys are. They are very popular in Yoruba, land, but the majority of them came from America, obviously. They were trying to look for position. They couldn't get. All of this people or groups who are shouting on the Dua Republic, who are shouting restructuring, actually hate the Nobu. They just don't like the Nobu. It's because that they are not part of the Tinobu caucus and they cannot get political positions. That is the fundamental reason why they hate that guy. You will see their behavior in what I'm going to say today. They've always been that nonsense. So I was privileged to a private conversation of one of the group. And then uh, they were discussing my person. They said that the intelligence they got, that I was the one who made someone to win the election in Lagos because I threatened the evil. I said, ah, well, they don't want to have anything to do with that intelligence. Then in that private conversation that was much and shared with me. The man who founded that organization, he was the one champion in this. He said in that conversation that he has sent several people to me that I should stop attacking evil, that I have refused to listen. And I know those people that you've sent to me. And I keep saying to them that I've done my own research. My finding says, Ibo are the number one enemy of the Yoruba nation. And I backed it up with evidence, verifiable evidence. So you don't come and meet me and say to me, that let us work with Ibo. Work with Ibo don't want this. These people don't want regional government. These people want a unity system. Evidence are there to support it. So they said that I, I caused them to lose. And they will go outside. These people I'm talking about, they will go outside and condemn the two major political parties in Nigeria. APC and PDP. They will condemn them, but they are working on the net for, on the ground for PDP. I don't like PDP as a political party because they've never won an election in Europe. And they have always been rigging election. They have always been rigging. Most of the time. So that was what they were discussing in that group, saying that, oh, it was Adeyika grandson that caused the Igbo not to vote in Lagos because they wanted to capture Lagos. And if this Libra should take Lagos, Forget about it. Yoruba civilization will be over and done with within 10 years. Now, I was now sent another of their private conversation. They said that the people in South Africa were actually watching my video, the previous campaign trail we did. I, I do have some contact recently with some South African Jews. They want me to come and give a speech about certain things, which we are still planning to do in future. So they said in their private conversation that uh, one man in particular said that South Africans youth were circulating 
my video, you know, edited version, so my videos are long, edited version, circulating it around South Africa to show that the Igbo are criminals. And this man now said that, I am the one that is causing the xenophobic attack in South Africa, that is making South Africa be able to kill Igbo. <laughs> and then, uh, what really got it for me was that they have been pleading with me, but I refused to listen. They want me to attack Tinubu. They want me to work with Igbo, Igbo that are destroying your land. So folks, you just have to be conscious of Libra. And you have to be conscious of a number of people shouting on the Dua Republic, shouting on the Dua Republic, shouting restructuring. They use it as a means of their male ticket. They are not very sincere. The election is over. All of them have gone back to their day job. When election is coming, you will see them again coming up with another nonsense. So that's just by the way. I just want you to be conscious that it is not everybody that I shout you know, to do a republic that actually want your land to be free. All they are looking for is their interest because they have not been able to get the kind of leverage they are looking for from Tinubu. They hate him. They hate him. This is what history has shown that there will always be two camps in every society. It happens in America. It is the case in Britain. So there will be this camp. But it is going to be better for the Yoruba nation if the conservative movement keeps growing so that we all can think Yoruba first. Well, folks, let me say something to you that has happened to the Yoruba nation that makes evil people to call us cowards. Between 1962 and 1964, over 14,528 Yoruba women children and men were killed. They were wiped out. And I'm going to show you how we are able to collect data to show you the exact figure. As an economist, we make use of estimates whereby you cannot get exact figure. And then when we do, we back it up with facts. Well, why is this people, why were they killed? They protested the arrest of the Yoruba leader, Awolo. Awolo was placed under house arrest in, 2000, in 1962. That was less than a year, two years, after Nigeria had her independence from Britain. Now, people, Libra, at the Igbo, particular, they will say to you, oh, it was a crisis between Akintola and Awolowo that led to the killing of these people. It wasn't. It wasn't. Now, they said to me, they contested the figure, saying that over 14,000 people did not die or were not murdered by the Igbo and the Fulani between 1962 and 1964. Now, when they were saying this, they did not give specific number of deaths because there was a serious civil unrest. Because Awolo, as the leader of the Yoruba, was summarily arrested by the Fulani and the Igbo because they were the one who formed the first government in Nigeria after the English left. The Fulani and the Igbo formed the first government. The Fulani was the leader, Balewa. The Igbo Zik was just the figurehead, Governor General. So both of them gang up together to surprise and subjugate the Yoruba nation. But Awolo was the voice who was against them. So to completely subjugate the Yoruba nation, they then arrested our leader. So people went onto the streets to protest. In the process, 14,528 Yoruba children, women, and men were killed by the police and the military, who were predominantly Awusa Fla. There are some fundamental questions that we must ask to back up this assertion. And I will prove this to you that this is the number of the Yoruba that were killed by these two horrible people, Igbo and Fulani. They killed us. So all of the noise that Igbo are making is just because they have lost 
the intention, they have lost the means to subjugate the Yoruba nation. But they want to do that by other means, unregulated movement into Yoruba land. Look, we did some research, some research before. You see, Yoruba, young Yoruba people, they don't like to have children just everywhere with every woman. They don't like to do that. You're a young Yoruba man. But Igbo does that. They have children just all over the place. And they're doing that in Yoruba and deliberately as a means to suppress and subjugate us in future which we're going to talk about. Now, let us, when we give you figures, we just don't say things. No one has been able to give the exact figure of the number of deaths. There was a crisis between 1962 and 1964. When there was a crisis, people died. But no one has given figure as to the exact number of deaths. But why would I have did that? Because we're very smart. We also gave figures of the number of those who died between 1993 and 1999 during the June 12 struggle. We call it struggle, but it was actually a civil war because it was a big fight. We were very young then. We gave the figure as 16,000 plus. But for those who died between 1962 and 1964, the figure that we gave was exactly 14,528. Let me now show you how this came about. There are fundamental questions that we must ask in order to first establish the fact that there were indeed deaths of Yoruba people between 1962 and 1964. And these are the fundamental questions that we must now ask ourselves. And these fundamental questions will point to one fundamental fact that the Fulani and the Igbo murdered 14,528 Yoruba people under two years. Now the first question that we must ask ourselves, was Aulo arrested in 1962 and imprisoned by the coalition government of Fulani and the Igbo in 1963? He was arrested in, I, I don't want to give you the date, the exact date that Aulo was arrested, but you are going to get it shortly. I'm hiding that date. That date is historical and it's going to shock you. Like when I said that I gave that Naira is an acronym, which means never allow Igbo to rule again. I'm surprised that the number of Yoruba are not aware until recently. But it has always been because I read it in books and I've had it in my adult, in my adult life. So, so the first fundamental question we must ask to get about this question. Because why we are raising the issue around this number of deaths is that when your people are being killed, you must take revenge. You don't say, oh, I'll, I'll forgive and forget. If somebody slap you, you do not slap back, he's going to come and punch you. If you do nothing, he's going to hit you with any weapon. If you do nothing, then he's going to kill you. But if somebody slap you, and you return a serious punch, he will think twice before he thinks of returning his own punch. That is how society, that is how country, that is how individuals are respected. But if people say to you and do shit to you and you don't do anything, they call you cowards. Ibo don't use the word cowards to describe Fulani. Ibo don't use the word cowards to describe the people in the Middle Belt. Igbo nation has never used the word coward to describe Ijo people or Efik Ibibio people, their next door neighbor. Igbo will have to travel through several nations within Nigeria to get to Yoruba land, yet they describe us as cowards. Because when they do shit to us, we just put our hands. We embrace them the more. Try that with white America. You do you undermine their interests, they will come to kill you. That is it. So people don't want to dare America because they know the consequences. But Igbo constantly, continuously to dare the Yoruba because they believe that we are cowards. We will never do anything back to them. That was why they refused to demand for the deputies governor seats of Canada. 
but they came to Lagos and said they want the deputy governor. They know you are not going to do anything, you just blab about it. But if you slaughter them, they will not even remember the word coward. And that is what our generation will now do to them. We will kill them. And they are so scared about this. So the first question that we must ask to actually find out if truly 14,528 Yoruba were killed by Igbo and Fulani between 1962 and 1964, when both of them were best of friends, when they were in power. The first question was, was Awolowo in 1962 arrested? Yes, he was arrested. I'm not going to tell you the date, but I'll give you the date very soon. Was he imprisoned by the coalition government of the Fulani and the Igbo in 1963? Yes. Awolo was jailed 10 years by Tafa Balewa and Zik on the Fatum coup. They charged him to court for treasonable felony. They said he was planning to remove Igbo and Fulani from power. They said he was planning coup to remove Igbo and Fulani from power. This man wasn't doing that. So they put him in prison for 10 years. This was less than two years after Hawolo helped to chase away the English from Nigeria. The only way he, they can compensate him is to put him in prison for 10 years. Thank you, folks. Please do not forget to share this and help us to and help us to love and like it because people will come and destroy us. So you see, but when the white English were with us, our law was never arrested, was never jailed. But two black people jailed our law. Now, before I move further on the fundamental questions that I would like to raise to show you that Indeed, 14,528 Yoruba people were killed by Igbo and Aousa Plan. Let us talk about the date when Aulo was arrested. And uh, I'm going to talk about the date that Aulo was arrested. But, but let, me, let me give you a scenario before I talk about the date. I am very focused about what I want to do today because I want you to appreciate the kind of research that we do to bring about our findings and then to show the need the young Yoruba like us to fight and defend ourselves. Yesterday I gave you the figure that every day, according to the police in Lagos State, 150 armed robbery cases are reported every day in Lagos. Every blessed day, you sleep and wake up. Armed robbers have committed 150 armed robbery cases. Every blessed day. And according to the police, the research that we got, they said that out of these 150 cases, 40 involve the use of firearms. 40 involve the use of firearms. Firearm is gone. Now, we now thought about it long and wide. Now, if guns are fired 40 times, according to the police, we then calculated using video estimation that at least there will be 20 casualties out of 40. Somebody is shooting gun. At least out of 40 times, at least you hit a target 20 times. So out of that 20 casualties, we further assume that at least 10 people will die. Now, the point is this. Out of 40, 40 people might die. Out of 40, 30 people might die. Casualty, out of 40, 20 people might eventually die. Out of 40, 10 people might die. Out of 40, one people might die. Out of 40, none. No death could have been recorded. That these are probabilities. So we make the assumption that out of 40 times that gun will be fired, at least 20 people will be injured. Out of that, at least 10 people will die. This is an estimate. The police can actually give us appropriate records, but they don't like to give us records that we demand. They keep records of all of these things because these things were reported. So when you have 10 deaths per day, that will be 70 deaths per day from harm robbery. 
seventh in Lagos State alone. It does not include Oyo State, Ogun State, Oshun State, and the rest of Yoruba State. Seventy per week. When you multiply seventy by fifty-two weeks in a year, we're talking about three thousand six hundred and forty deaths. That is on the average. Believe you me, it might be higher than that in Lagos State from one crime, armed robbery. You understand? So these are these are means by which you can come up with findings. We're going to show you how we came up with that findings of 14,528. Now we've asked the first question. Was Saulo arrested in 1962? The answer was yes. Was he jailed for 10 years by the Igbo and Fulani in 1963? Yes, he was jailed for 10 years. Now let me tell you the date Saulo was arrested. The date has historical connotation. Paolo was arrested on 29th of May, 1962. 29th of May is Otmar Danfodio's day. When the Fulani want to perpetrate evil against anyone, they start on 29th of May. When they wanted to subjugate the Yoruba nation, through the support of the Igbo, they arrested our leader on the 29th of May, 1962. You can go and do this research. Let me tell you that the Democracy Day that we have in Nigeria, May 29, is actually Otman Danfodio's day. And I'll show you. May 29, 1904. May 29, 1904, that was the day Otman Danfodio and his brother, Abdullah Danfodio, that was the day they invaded Arusaland and killed all their kings. They beheaded them. They cut off their head. May 29, 1904. Today, in Arusaland, all their kings have been eradicated. And Fulani imposed themselves as Emir. Sultan of Shokoto is Fulani. Emir of Kano is Samusi Lamido Samusi is Fulani. All of their Emir, they are Fulani. They killed all Aousa leaders. May 29, 1904. May 29, 1952. You don't have records of this. That was the first time the English read the sensual exercise in Nigeria in favor of the Aousa Fulani, May 29, 1952. The censor was actually started. The one for the Yoruba, we have started our own earlier. But the one for Igbo and Aousa Fulani took almost three to four months. Our home was done under a few weeks. So the English relaxed to first scan the Yoruba and then manipulated the censor for the Arusa Fulani. That was May 29, 1952. The English read the censor for the Fulani. It was the first time in the entire world history that people who live in arid deserts will be more than those who live in coastal areas. That was the first time in the history of humankind. Those who live in desert, eh? people die easily by it. They live terrible life there because it's this desert. So people move down to coastal area. People who live in coastal area have always been more than those who live in the desert. Nigeria Republic is about three times bigger than the entire northern Nigeria. The population is under 10 million. Maybe it's around 20 something million now. Chad Republic is bigger than entire Northern Nigeria. Yet the entire Northern Nigeria population is more than those of Chad Republic. That censor was fake. I told you that the English are very cunning people. They still do it up to now. They are very cunning. They will smile with you and they want to destroy your life. You know, they don't like your brother. You don't have to like them. That is the truth. 
So you understand, you know, now May 29, 1904, that was when Ottoman Dan Fodio invaded what is called Awusa land and beheaded all their kings. He was deceiving them with Quran. Yeah, he deceived them with Quran. He killed all of them. So he put his own full army there to, to be their king. So May 29, 1952 was when the English read the censor in Nigeria for the full army. May 29, 1959. That was the day the northern region got their self rule from the British. We, the Yoruba, we got our self rule as far back as 1951, when Awolo was first Minister for Finance and Local Government. We've been ruling ourselves since then. But Fulani got their own self rule May 29, 1959. It is significant for them. They always choose May 29 for anything that they are doing. It is a spiritual date for them because that was the day. Their leader, their Fulani leader, Atman Dafodio, killed the Abusa Fulani uh, kings. So they want to maintain that day to carry out any subjugation, any atrocity against anybody. That's their spiritual day, they so believe. May 29, 1962. This is what is applicable to the Yoruba nation. You go and check your record. That was the day the Fulani, with the support of the Igbo, voted at the House of Parliament in Lagos and declared a state of emergency in Yoruba land. Awusa and Fulani, their region is not Western region. Awusa and Fulani, their region is not Western region. Igbo, their region was never Western region. But these two people voted at the House of Parliament on May 29, 1962, and declare a state of emergency on the Yoruba Western region. Do you know what it means by state of emergency? Do you know what is meant by that state of emergency? They will bring out police and army and will kill you. If you were in Lake Berebe, they kill you. When you have state of emergency, there is gone everywhere. People who do not live in Yoruba land declare state of emergency on the Yoruba people. You know why they did that? Because they were in power. It was a coalition government. You know what brought about coalition government? When you have an election, you don't, no party has majority. When no party has majority, two or more parties will have to come together to form government. So the Igbo and Fulani came together in 1960 to form government. When they formed government, they started using their power against the Yoruba nation. These guys may need to kill them, believe me. There's no contest about that. This is why history is very important. Very, very important. You need to know your enemies. So we're talking about that date, May 29. It's very significant to the Awusa Fulani. That day they use it to commit atrocity. That day. So May 29, 1962, they declared state of emergency against the Yoruba nation. They started killing us on an industrial scale. They imposed coffee on us. You cannot go out from six o'clock. If you go out, they kill you. Even if you do not go out, they don't like you, they kill you. That is, well, that is what state of emergency means. It is ridiculous. We have three major ethnic groups in Nigeria and two, Fulani and Igbo decided to declare state of emergency on the Yoruba nation, a nation where they are not living. And they imposed state of emergency because they were in government. They will pay. There's no contest about that. They will pay. So, folks, can you love and like this so that we'll be sure that we are making sense? Folks, if there is any problem, kindly let me know. If we're no longer. Yeah. You understand? Another thing they did on May 29, 1962, that was the day they arrested Awolo. It's significant to them. They want to destroy you, they use May 29. You see, Something happened in January 1966. 
15th of January 1966, Igbo military officers, they kill Yoruba leaders. They kill Awusa Fulani leaders. But why the Yoruba leader was doing nonsense? Fulani group up and attack the Igbo back. May 29, 1966. Yeah. We attacked them by May 29, 1966. On May 29, 1999, they returned power back to for democratic rule. May 29, 1999, that was when we, the military gave power back to Sibley May 29 was not an election day. It was not nationally significant in any event in Nigeria. May 29 was not our independence day. May 29 was never the day that Nigeria became republic. We became republic. 1st of October 1963. Our independence was 1st of October 1960. June 12, 1993 was a significant day in the history of Nigeria. That was the first and remains the only election that was free and fair. None of this day has been selected as democracy day. But May 29. Every May 29, that is what when we do handing over from one regime or one administration to another. May 29 has been selected as Democracy Day, but it was it is actually Otman than Fodium Day. That was the day the Fulani conquered the Aousa Fulani land. And they believe that that May 29, that is when they conquered the entire Nigeria. So folks, May 29 is never significant to the Yoruba nation. May 29 is never our own Democracy Day. June 12 is our democracy day. And the most important and significant day in the history of the Yoruba nation is September 23rd. Majority of you do not know what happened September 23rd. You don't know. September 23rd, 1886, that was the day the entire Yoruba nation agreed, they signed an agreement that never again are we going to fight ourselves as Yoruba people? Because we fought ourselves in Kiriji war for 16 years. That is what I keep saying to the evil. That's what I keep saying to the evil. That's because we are, we are having sex with you is insignificant. When we want to deal with it. If we can kill ourselves for 16 years, how much more you who are foreign? Stupid. So, there is no other significant day in the history of the Yoruba other than September 23rd. That was what we said in the book that I wrote, The Commonwealth of the Yoruba Kingdom. That's September 23rd will be the day that we are going to open our parliament. Every new parliament will, shall be open on September 23rd. Because it's the significant day for us. That was the day the entire Yoruba nation sign an agreement that we will never fight ourselves again. That was 130 years ago. But today you see horrible, stupid Libra, who are predominantly PDP member. They want to destroy Tinubu. Anybody that is fighting for the collective interest of the Euro vanish, the Libra wanting them down. This is contrary to the agreement that the Euro had 133 years ago when we signed the agreement that never for once shall we fight ourselves anymore as Yoruba people. So the Libra, this is something for you to think about. Now, folks, you now know the significance of the day, May 29. It is not our democracy day. It is Otman Danfodio day. And that was why the Fulani imposed it. But let me say to you, you know, it was Obasanjo that made May 29 democracy. Yeah, it was Obasanjo because it's always working for Fulani, by the way, because it's evil. His father was evil. Now, let me say something to you. Why is it that we're celebrating May 29th as democracy? It is because Fulani have always been in power. Fulani have always been ruling. If Fulani is not ruling, they put their lanky there. They are stood there. No Yoruba has been president of Nigeria. Yet we are the majority 
and we are the economic backbone of Nigeria. So if a Yoruba were to be in power, May 29 would not be democracy. Because the right that Buhari has to sign executive order as president of Nigeria. If you have Tinubu there as president, if you have Oshiba there as president, or you have Fashola as president, they can issue an executive order and return Nigeria back to the Straits. They can issue an executive order and decentralize the police, decentralize the military. They don't need the National Assembly. National Assembly is useless. They can use the executive power to make your balance great. So we are going to play politics and we're going to use organized violence at the same time, simultaneously. It is because Fulani have always been in power since 1960. That is the only reason they have always subjugated the Yoruba nation. If they are not in power, forget it. They are friends and allies, the English. There's nothing they can do. That is why I keep saying to the Yoruba nation, you need friends and allies in the United States. Without that, you can't do anything. Fulani, whenever they are in power, they subjugate you. They suppress you. Fulani do not get to power alone. They always use the evil. So we must deal with the evil in our space. If we do not deal with the evil in our space, it will be terrible for us. Terrible. So you know the significance of May 29. So the question that we raise is this. How do we get to know the number of Yoruba that were murdered between 1962 and 1964, the first question has been answered. Was Aulo arrested in 1962? Yes, he was arrested May 29, 1962, and put under house arrest. He was then jailed in, and I think, September 1963. For 10 years, somebody who has done nothing. Now, the next question that we need to ask ourselves is, did Yoruba youth at the time protest the arrest and imprisonment of Aulo? Yes. That is the correct answer. The Yoruba youth at the time protested the unjust arrest and imprisonment of Awolowo by the Fulani and the Igbo at the material time. Now, the top questions that we must ask ourselves because we want to find out how many Yoruba who were killed between 1962 and 1964, who were killed by the Igbo and Fulani. Now, the third question we must ask ourselves is this. Was there a joint army police operation in the western region at the material time? Yes. A joint army police operation in the western region was led by CO 4th Battalion, Lieutenant Kole Maimaliri, at the behest of the Fulani and the Hebo coalition government. This culminated in the declaration of the state of emergency in May 29, 1962, after a fracas in the House of Assembly, in the Western House of Assembly. So there was that, it was declared the state of emergency. So Tafa Balewa, as the Prime Minister, and Zik, as the Governor General, sent out the police and the army. So I'm asking you, we want to know the number of people who died. People died. Not one, not two, but thousands of people died. And how do we get to know this? We ask ourselves one fundamental question. Number one, was Awolowo arrested? Yes. Was Awolowo jailed? Yes. Did the Yoruba youth at that time protest over the unjust arrest and imprisonment of Awolowo? Yes. When people protest, they started destroying things. Street protests, we know how it is done. Now, the third question was that, was a state of emergency declared? Was there a joint army and police operation in Western Nigeria? Yes. So when police and army come out, they kill because a state of emergency has been declared. They use gun and fire you. While the youth were protesting, the army has been instructed by Balewa and Zig to shoot and kill our people. Now, let us ask the number four question. These were questions that we were raising to ourselves when we were doing this research. We want to find out the number of Yoruba that were killed by the Igbo and Fulani. Do you understand? Number four question. 
Was there a shoot on site order by the then Prime Minister, Mr. Tafalio? And that's the next question we have to ask ourselves. The first question is that you now know, you agree with me, that our law was arrested. He was then in prison. That's the first one. You, the second fact is that Yoruba protested because of that. The second fact was that there was a joint army and police operation. The fourth was that was there a shoot on site order from the prime minister, Balewa? And the answer is a yes. There was a shoot on site order from Tafa Balewa, and it was Lieutenant Colonel Maimaleri of Fulani and later Captain Patrick Tukuma, Eziogu, and Ibo, who will later lead the 1966 group that led the shoot on site order of the Fawa Balewa government in 1962. This led to the death of over 14,000 Yoruba people. Young Yoruba, I want you to know certain things that happen that makes you to be subjugated. Igbo and Fulani, who are foreigners in Yoruba land, voted at the House of Parliament that there must be a state of emergency in Yoruba land. Igbo people do not live in Yoruba land. Awusa Fulani people do not live in Yoruba land. Those who do not live in our space voted that a state of emergency be declared in our state, in our region rather. This is against natural law of nature. The Yoruba alone should have decided whether a state of emergency be imposed in their whole region, not foreigners. But you know why they did that? They had the power. They were in power. So they used and abused that power. The second thing that you must now know is this. When the prime minister, who is not a Yoruba citizen, gave a shoot on site order, after he and Igbo had declared a state of emergency, he then had a shoot on site order. He then imposed a full army, Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel Mamalieri, to carry out that order. A shoot on site order has been given, and a full army will now lead that in a Yoruba region where this man, full army, is not from. It doesn't have any blood. Whatsoever. You see how they subjugate you. It is like me, a Yoruba citizen, and then the Sc Scottish and the Northern Irish declare state of emergency on England, on English people. And they will now appoint me, a Yoruba, to be in charge of that order. Do I have any fucking blood related with the English? I will fucking kill all of them without blinking an eyes. People who are not Yoruba voted for a state of emergency. When a state of emergency is declared, that means that army and police will come onto the street and be killing people. Then after that, Tafa Balewa, who is not a Yoruba citizen, gave a shoot on site order to any Yoruba that comes out or that dear him. Then he then appointed a Fulani Lieutenant Colonel my Mallory to be in charge of that order. That is how they kill your people. After my Mallory has killed enough Yoruba, then they hand, he handed power to Kaduna Eziogu Chukuma. He was captain then, Captain Patrick Chukuma Eziogu Anibo. Look, they have been killing you for years. It is our generation that must not kill them. These people must pay for the consequences of their action. Mr. Tawu, first of all, please kindly remove any statement that is unreasonable, please. Sir, we don't want you to come here. You see that? No, this is what is upsetting for me. I'm a Yoruba citizen and I'm reading the history of my people being shot and killed. A Yoruba citizen, we are in our whole region. Two people, Igbo and Awusafolan, who are not Yoruba, voted to declare a state of emergency in Yoruba land, where they are not from. Thereafter, 
they gave an order for shoot aside on Yoruba people who are not their people. Then they put Fulani in charge of that responsibility, of that operation. Lieutenant Colin Mamali, he killed Yoruba, he then handed over to another foreigner, Captain Patrick Chukuma, is you and evil. And these two individuals together murdered 14,000 plus Yoruba. The exact figure was 14,528. Everything we're saying is verifiable. These are facts. Now we're still moving on to that figure. Now let's go on. Number five question. I'm going to talk about Mr. Buari. These are records. The histories are there. Unfortunately, we young Yoruba, we just read and doubt. We have certificate. We've got no mind. One thing I've learned from the English and white America is any English or white America who is brilliant, boom, they push them forward to lead them. That is it. This is something that we Yoruba must adopt. You cannot sit in a beer panel, you've not done any research, and you are telling me, grandson, let us go. They are our enemy. Why would I want to work with them? But you are sitting in a beer panel, drinking beer, drink, uh, eating a, 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 what do they call it? A, 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 I don't know that how it is. And you are doing shit. You have never even opened a newspaper. You want to tell me how to reason. When we sit in the library, day and night, thinking for the Yoruba nation. You have no clue about history. You have no clue about anything that is going on presently. You just open your mouth and say Fulani is your problem. Who are the people putting Fulani in power? Is it not the evil vote that Fulani have always been using to get into power? So if you deal with the evil, indirectly you tell with the Fulani. If we reduce the number of evil in Yoruba, and they will be pleading with us, and they want to support our political interests so that they can come into our space. But they come into our space unmolested, unregulated. When there is election time, they cast their vote for Fulani. Idiot. By the time we decimate them in Yoruba, they will be the one carrying Yoruba political interests in their head in order for them to be in our space. But people do shit to you. You don't attack them. They will destroy you. So let's go on forward. We have to prove to you how we came about this figure. We just don't just give you figure and we, we just think that, oh, these guys are just fabricating things. We do extensive research and we are waking up the mind of the young Europe and we are going to fight. And let's look at Mr. Buari. The number five question is this. Did Buari, the current president of Nigeria, did he receive double promotion in 1963? The same year, Awolo was in prison and riot broke out across Yoruba. Awolo was arrested in 1962. He was found guilty for an offense he had not committed in 1963. When the judgment was pronounced, Bua, riot broke out. All head let loose across Yoruba. As at that time, the current president of Nigeria, Mr. Buhari, he would receive double promotion in 1963. Buhari was 21 years old in 1963. He had no formal education or military training other than a 10-month cadet training. As of 1963, Buhari had no formal education. He doesn't have secondary school education. His highest qualification as of 1963 was a 10-month training as a cadet. That was his highest level of education. But he was promoted twice. On the same day, Awolowo was in prison. He was promoted by Tafar Balewa, to a second lieutenant, and that same day, he became platoon commander, second infantry brigade at Pepota. The president. One thing I want you to realize, young Yoruba, is this. Yoruba, Igbo, and Awusa Fulani, we are not the same people. That we are inside of Nigeria does not make us the same people. 
We are different nations. To destroy your land, you will need a foreigner. To destroy Igbo, you will need a foreigner. To destroy Awusa Fulani, you will need a foreigner. So because we are in Nigeria, does not make us the same. Because we have the same skin color, does not make us the same people. So that was why Tafawa Balewa and Zeke, Fulani and Igbo, gang up together and declare a state of emergency on the Yoruba nation. They did not declare a state of emergency on Igbo nation. They did not declare a state of emergency on Awusa Fulani nation. That was why these two nations, the Igbo and Awusa Fulani, declare a shoot on site order on any Yoruba in Yoruba land in 1962. That was why they put a Fulani man to be in charge of that operation. Lieutenant Colin my Maleri. After that one has killed enough of Yoruba, he handed over to an Igbo to be in charge of that operation of shoot on site order. If they put Yoruba in charge of that operation, he will not kill these people. The records are there, folks. It's just that Yoruba don't read. White people, they understand one fundamental thing. To make their country great, anybody that is brilliant, they push them forward and they take care of their women. In Yoruba, anybody that is smart, we want to kill him. That is what the liberal want to do to me. They are looking for a way to destroy them. But they are going to fail because they are going to destroy themselves. And one thing that we as conservatives are doing is that we actually want to deal squarely and precisely with the Yoruba liberals. Because for far too long, they have been undermining our greatness. So you see, to destroy your nation, you need foreigners. If Tinubu is the president of Nigeria, all these horrible Libra who are shouting, they will benefit from Tinubu's presidency. Because Tinubu is your man. He's going to settle the, the same way Buhari is settling Fulani. All these Libra Yoruba that want Tinubu there. If Tinubu is president, he will give them appointment into board of government parastatals. They will be eaten. But no Yoruba has been president of Nigeria. So that is one thing the Libra are not thinking. The only thing in their head is to destroy Tinubu in favor of Igbo and Fulani. Foolish Igbo because of their pecuniary motive. A number of them have now joined the call for the Lua Republic, the call for restructuring, essentially to make money out of it. They are not sincere. So what we are asking you now, or this fifth question that I've raised, is about your president. In 1963, he was just a 21 years old. We do tourism. These things I'm talking about, I released it. When Buari was contesting for his first time in office. I did the research under the YY, stupid PDP. They stole my work without paying any compensation. They were using my material to campaign. They didn't even deem it fit to pay for it. You think it's easy to go and sit down in the library to buy books, to read 10, 20 books, so you, for you to come up with one policy idea? You think that is a joke? Stupid leader. So that was what happened. When Awolo was in prison that same day, Buhari was promoted twice. Buhari's highest level of education was 10 months cadet training. Buhari do not have, doesn't have rather, secondary school certificate. That is the honest truth. He doesn't have YX certificate. So he was promoted to second lieutenant and then platoon commander, second infantry brigade, Abekuta. Abekuta. Not Shokoto, not Ebola, Abekuta in 1963. That was about the same time that the operation of shoot on site order was in place because Balua and Zik had declared Yoruba land state of emergency. So Buhari was promoted twice, who has no formal education. Buhari had no formal education. That is the honest truth. We don't have to pretend. Now, the sixth question we must ask you is this. Did Buhari, as the platoon commander, 2nd Infantry Brigade, Abekuta, participate in suppressing the riot in Abekuta, Yoruba land in 1963, over the imprisonment of Chief Obafemi Awolo? He is the leader of the platoon command. 
Second Infantry Division, uh, Infantry Brigade, Brigade Abekuta, is the leading person in Abekuta. Yoruba were protesting in Abekuta. Buhari led the army and the police joint operation to kill Yoruba people. We can't deny it. The records are there. I said something that in 1975, Tafaha Balewa, a Fulani, took a papa wolf from the Western region. The records are there. Check federal government decide. It was a decree. It's not as if we're thinking this thing up from our brain. The records are there. You just don't read. Just respect people who are reading. It isn't easy. Respect those who of us who have taken upon ourselves to free your banish. The records are there. In 1975, oil community, they received 45% of the proceeds of oil. 45%. A full animal called Talamuane reduced it to 20%. Or Basanjo using a Boyade Coal Commission removed the remaining 20% and reduced it to 0%. Today, the owner of the oil are only collecting 13%. When in the 50s, in the 60s, in the 70s, they were collecting 45%. Today, they are collecting 13%. People just think as, as if Nigeria just started yesterday. Particularly stupid Libra. Igbo have been doing shit to the Yoruba for generations. And this is the time for us to put them to where they belong. Pit Latrine. And dump them there. Yoruba, we have accommodated a number of nonsense. We have a port. We cannot control that port. It was taken away from us. If Muritala Muhammad were to be a Yoruba citizen, would he have taken away our port from us? No. You understand what we're talking about? Right. Let us check those on Facebook. Yeah. Okay, I think we're still working. Thank you so much, those of you on Facebook. You are loving and liking this. It's great. Buhari led soldiers, mostly a Usta Fulani soldier, from a Bekuta bar in 1963 and shot on sight several Yoruba youth protesting the imprisonment of Chief of Afemi Awolo. He's your president today. He's your president. And the liberal who said, oh, Tinubu made him president. Tinubu did not make Buhari president. That is the truth. But because you don't, you are not brilliant, when people are illiterate, they cannot think. 2010, Tinubu made Jonathan president through doctrine of necessity. 2011, Tinobu made Jonathan president. The Yoruba, we voted for Jonathan. So we made Jonathan president twice. By the cost of Tinobu, what, what happened? Jonathan betrayed Tinobu. So in 2015, Tinobu had a choice. If he contests, he will lose. Because Jonathan is contesting, sitting president. Jonathan will get the vote of the Yibo. He will get the vote of the South South. And he will get the vote of the Middle Belt. So he has three out of six regions. He will win. If Tinobu should contest, he will only get the vote of the Yoruba. Because as of 2015, Buhari will also be contesting. And forever, the people in the Northwest and in the Northeast will always be voting for Buhari. Tinobu was desperate to remove Jonathan because Jonathan betrayed him. But Buhari did not agree with Tinobu for Tinobu to be the candidate of the Amaja party. Wari too is desperate. Chinobu played the cool card and decided to allow Buari. If Tinubu was adamant, Tinubu would have contested under ACA. Buari would have contested under CPC. There will have been three major candidates. Tinubu will get the vote of the Yoruba alone. That will not secure him the presidency of Nigeria. Jonathan will have won in 2015 because he will have won Middle Belt, he will have won South South, and he will have won the Yibo vote. Buari will, will have won Aousa vote and Kanuri vote. So Jonathan will be there. But Tinubu doesn't want that because Jonathan betrayed him. 
So Tinubu forgo his own personal interest to be president of Nigeria in 2015 and decided to support Buhari. So Buhari and Tinubu they secured Yoruba vote in 2015, Aousa vote and Kanuri vote, and took part of Middle Belt. That was how Jonathan lost. Tinubu did not make Buhari president. It was the irresponsible Jonathan and the Hebo who made Buhari president because they betrayed Tinubu. If Jonathan had not betrayed Tinubu, Tinubu would have supported Jonathan for the second time. Somebody who made him president in 2010 and 2011 has the capacity to have made him president in 2015. So Tinubu thought long and wide that if I contest, Jonathan will be president. He doesn't want Jonathan to be president. So he let us work with Buhari. What happened in the last election? Who made Buhari president? It wasn't Tinubu because people are ridiculously stupid. If PDP had not produced a team, if PDP had produced a competent, proper Yoruba citizen, the Yoruba nation would vote for their son. The South South will vote for that Yoruba candidate because that Yoruba candidate will have supported Jonathan previously. And if the Igbo are sincere for the first time, they will have voted for that PDP candidate as a Yoruba. Today, we are going to be talking about Buhari going back to Daura. But today is president elect because the horrible, criminally minded Igbo made another Fulani, Atiku, the, president, the vice presidential candidate of the PDP. What is the difference between Atiku and Buhari? Nothing. They are both Fulani. So you don't blame Tinubu, you blame your foolishness, your stupidity. How can somebody help you twice only for you to betray him? You are now expecting him to support Jonathan so that Yibo can call us cowards. Tinubu helped Jonathan 2010 and 2011, but Jonathan put Yibo in his government. <laughs> so if Tinubu should work with him in 2015. Igbo will not call us cowards. Typical weak-minded people. Tinubu showed him that Yoruba are no longer cowards. And we booted him out. We booted him out. It's not as if we want Buhari. We don't particularly like Buhari. I'm telling you the history. We don't like Buhari. But if the PDP had produced somebody like Fireship or any other competent, proper Yoruba, Buhari will have been on his way now. But the Igbo produced Atiku. So we're asking them, move to Atiku space and go and do your business there. Horrible people. We don't like Buhari. That is the truth. The Igbo and the Fulani always work together. But this time around, we're going to deal with them. We will deal with them. But the Igbo is our main target. We decimate them. We face Fulani. There will be war in Nigeria. There's no pretext. If, you, if a country goes to war twice, that country will break. That country will break. That is what the full army don't understand. They still rely so much on the stupid English who are supporting them. We are going to get the support of the United States of America because America wants to do business. So folks, let us continue. That was what happened in 1963. That was what Buhari did. So these above questions that I've raised were fundamentals. This was a question that shows that one truth, the Yoruba women, children, and men were murdered between 1962 and 1964 when we were protesting the arrest and imprisonment of Obafemi Awolowo, our supreme leader, if we can use that word. But we are going to canonize Awolowo in future under the Yoruba Republic. He will be our number 402 Oisha. We currently have 401 Oisha. Raul Law is going to be canonized as number 402 Orisha of Yoruba Nation. So Orisha simply means people who were previously on this planet had and they have done exceedingly well. So you canonize them like the Catholics do. You make them holy. You worship them. That is it. So to, to broadcast my point, I stated further that between 1963 and 1964, there was no proliferation of small arms and light weapons as we experience today in Nigeria. So the argument was that, oh, the 14,000 plus Yoruba that were killed between 1962 and 1964, were Yoruba killing each other? No. Then it was only stone, stick, 
and cutlasses. There was no proliferation of small harms and light harms. We don't have much guns in the 60s, like we do have now. Fulani have guns. Igbo criminals, they have guns. Yoruba too, we have guns. So there is proliferation of small and light harms all across Nigeria. It wasn't the case in the 60s. So the Yoruba couldn't have possibly used stick and cutlasses to kill 14,000 plus of themselves. No! And moreover, we have signed an agreement never to fight each other anymore after the end of the Three G War. So we were not the people who were killing ourselves. We were being killed by the Fulani and the Igbo. And another thing I raise is that when the Igbo and some stupid liberal were saying that it was Yoruba that were killing themselves, we have always protested them with our fists. People don't have weapons. As of now, like now. In the past, we have always been going out protesting with our fists. Only the security agency, like the police and the army, under the control of the Fulani and the Igbo, were the one with the weapon in the 60s. In the 60s, the Yoruba only had sticks and cutlasses. And our fists, we couldn't have killed ourselves with stick and cutlasses, 14,000 of ourselves. You can only do that with weapons. And as of then, only the Igbo and the Fulani had access to weapons. And based on the shoot on site order of Tafa Balewa, they did kill a number of us. The vast majority of the Yoruba people were killed by the Igbo and Fulani. Now, let me give you an assertion by Captain Uwobosi. Captain Uwobosi spoke on the shoot on site order by Balewa in 1963 in one of the statements he made. Captain Uwobosi was the same man that Inamdikano brought out during the last election where the man in his 80s was lying that the Igbo planned the coup to make Aolo prime minister. Yet after the coup, they literally left Aolo in prison. They did not plan the coup for Aolo. Igbo and Fulani were best of friends because Fulani did not hand over to Igbo. Igbo planned the coup to take over power. Now, obviously, it was, it's very deceitful. But he, he says something in his comment on the shoot on site order. And I will read it. He stated that as a young officer deployed to the railways as an escort, he was troubled by the fact that the prime minister left Lagos for his hometown in Bauchi during the protest, leaving crucial matters of state to the assistance in Lagos, as well as the army, which was fully mobilized. That was the statement of Captain Uwobosi then. It's now in his eight. He was the man that Nabi Kano brought out to do their horrible propaganda they used to do. He said that the army were mo mobilized, fully mobilized. Now, before the killing started, the father Baliwa left for Bauchi to go and relax and listen to the news of how Yoruba were killed. He gave the order and instructed Lieutenant Kole, my Mallory, and Captain Kaduna Eziogu to fucking kill the Yoruba people. This was supported by a statement made by that man. He said that they were fully mobilized to kill us. His perception does provide insight into the expectation of the soldiers, of their civilian masters, when they had drafted by civil authorities to stabilize the politics. The alleged Yoruba war on Yoruba is the height of misinformation. The Yoruba had no weapon. We only had cutlasses and stick and our fists. But the guns, the bombs, the tanks, all were in the hands of the Fulani and the Igbo. And they were fully 
and they are fully mobilized. They are fully mobilized. I'm, get, I'm getting some reports. Yeah, shoot to keep policy against the world. Thank you, those of you on Facebook. Continue to love and like this. So there was no war on war on war Yoruba. Yoruba were not killing themselves. The Fulani and the Igbo were hold out between 1963 and 1964, and they wiped out a generation of the Yoruba. The Yoruba that they killed, it was completely wiped off of a generation. They killed us. As of the time we were trying to do this research, there were no records of the number of deaths. Still, we went ahead with this research, we conducted it, we look at what happened, we ask questions, we look at records in order to get to the number of deaths at the material time. As economists, we made use of forecasts. And thousands of economists, they use estimates of the full amount of data or equivalently each year in our research. That's what we do. We were asking questions. But in respect of the number of deaths of the Yoruba people between 1962 and 1964, which we put at over 14,000, we estimated the number of deaths in 1962 and 1963 based on verifiable data. Based on verifiable data, what were these data that we used? The number of houses destroyed and the number of people injured. We analyzed it on an estimated risk rate for 1964. Economists uh, will understand what we're talking about here. Because as economists, we make use of forecasts. And then thousands of economists, we use estimates of the full amount of data or equivalently of the data we've been able to gather for a particular year in our research. So when we say that we base our data on verifiable data, we base our fact on verifiable data, what are these data? The number of houses destroyed and the number of people in the job. Now, how do we get the number of houses destroyed and the number of people Injured. This is what we're going to say. We relied heavily on the figure of the houses destroyed, the number of people injured, to estimate or determine how many people died, and to arrive at those responsible for the deaths. We rely on the order of the then Prime Minister Tafar Balewa to shoot on site any protester and those who carry who actually carry out this order. So that was how we find out who killed these people. These people were killed based on the order of the father Lewa and Z. And who carried out this order? Lieutenant Colonel My Mallory and Captain Patrick Kaduna Eziogu, who were evil and Fulani. And then in Abekuta, there was so much casualty in Abekuta. Who was the leader there? We found out that it was Buari, who was 21 years old then. He was promoted twice to second lieutenant and platoon commander. And he killed a lot of people because Abekuta recorded the largest casualty. And Buari was the leader there. Now, in addition to this that you said, how did we get the data of the number of houses destroyed and people injured? Chief B.C. Akande, who incidentally was the former chairman of the APC, he was the former Deputy Governor, if I'm right, but I know he's the former governor of a show state. And such an individual is suspected to be an authority. He's a former governor. So as a former governor, he has access to records that some of us might not even have access to. He wrote a book entitled Yoruba Culture and Economic Development. It was published in 2003. And on page 24 of that book, this is what is there. So this is what we said to you, a number of people. You don't just come to us and say, oh, let us work with the evil. When you just have some bottle of beer, you have never read any book. You are not talking to us. So we embrace you. We do beer parlor analysis. No, we are in library. 
We are everywhere. My deputy, before we spoke about on his statement, I said, look, do the research. I gave him the responsibility. Find me the truth. Oni wouldn't have made such a statement without some fucking Libra trying to disparage the office of the Oni. Do the research. He was very emotional. When he came with some finding, I said, you pronounce it. I can't speak of this. Get me verified the fact. And he did. Excellent Libra. And we spoke about it. So if we're drinking beer in the what, what are we going to know? <laughs> we'll just be talking, oh, forget about that thing, man. Let's go back. We, we address it properly. We are very brilliant. So the Yoruba nation should appreciate what we do. Now, let us look at what Chief B.C. Akadir wrote in his book, Yoruba Culture and Economic Development. It was published in 2003 on page 24. He said, and I quote, in the meantime, Chief Awolo and many of his associates had been detained and eventually imprisoned for alleged treasonable felony since May 29, 1962. That is there. That was on page 24. He added on page 26. He protest against the rigged election, which lasted 93 days, was marked with widespread civil unrest, demonstrations, and rioting popularly known as wet tear, i.e. burning. The extent of the violence led to the destruction of 20,000 houses and 50,000 people were injured. That is from the book written by Chief B.C. Akande, the former chairman of the APC and the current and the former governor of the state of Washington. The book titled Yoruba Culture and Economic Development. It was published in 2003. He said emphatically that 20,000 houses destroyed and 50,000 people injured. So, like we said in the data we collected about the number of hand robbery cases reported in Lagos per day, the police told us it's 150 cases that are reported every blessed day. You close your eyes, you open it, 150 harm robbery cases had happened, according to the police in Lagos. And out of these 150, 40 involved the use of firearms. They have not given us the figure of the number of death. We just concluded, as economists, we make use of estimates and forecast. We said, okay, if there is 40 use of firearms in which guns were actually fired 40 times, we estimated that, we forecast, that about 20 people perhaps will have been injured. And out of these 20, about 10 could have died. So that means on the average, 10 people died in Lagos as a result of armed robbery every fucking blessed day. That is 70 people. If you multiply 70 by 52 weeks in a year, we're talking about 3,640 or thereabout. Every blessed year. That is a value statement. So B.C. Akonde said in his book that 20,000 houses were destroyed, 50,000 people injured. When, when you have, I'll say, 20,000 houses. And you say, on the average, how many people will be living there? In each household, it could be four. Multiply four by 20,000. Do you know what it is? You know the number of people. You know the number of women that are there. So if you set fire on 20,000 houses, and you now say that at least out of four occupants in one of these houses, one would die. One would die. You destroy 20,000 houses. In the process, at least, there will be one casualty. One, one, one. That is around 20,000 people that could have lost their life as a result of this atrocity of the flying and the evil. The number of dead 
was measured in three theoretically equivalent ways by adding up the number of people living in the 20,000s destroyed, 20,000 houses destroyed, with an estimate of four persons per household, forecasting that at very at the very least, a death per household. By adding up all the injured of the two years, or by adding up all the actual death based on verifiable data, on an estimated rate for the following year. This is how economists come about their findings. And we did the same thing with the 14,528 figures that we have put out as the number of Yoruba wiped out by the Fulani and the Igbo between 1962 and 1964. We were not born. And as economists, we are not expected to be alive when this thing happens. But we can use estimates. We can use forecasts. This is what we do. Nobody has been able to count the number of the people in the world. But we say that the people in the world are 7.7 7, 7. something billion. Nobody is counting everybody on a daily basis. Forecast is made. Estimate is projected. So when you see an authority of that, and based of what we have raised, the questions that have raised, this were how we were collecting our data. We wanted to know the number of deaths. Paolo was jailed, was arrested first. 1962, he was jailed 1963. Protests broke out. A shoot on site order was given after a state of emergency had been declared. Who were the participants in the shoot, of, shoot on site order? Tafa Balewa and Zig gave the order. My Mallory was in charge of the operation, as well as Kaduna Ezio. Buhari was promoted twice in Abekuta, and that was where we recorded the highest casualty in Yoruba land. So Buhari participated in the killing of the Yoruba nation, uh, people as of 1963. How many houses were destroyed? According to an authority, a former governor, you expect him to be reasonable. Fachola once said that the Igbo are involved in vandalism. Fachola once said that think apart generates two trillion naira. Even though when we did our calculation, think apart generates four trillion naira. But Fachola, as a sitting governor, said that think apart generates two trillion naira, that he cannot even control the money. When we estimated the VAT paid in Yoruba, we said that the Lagos state generates 60% of the VAT. That is the result of the YYF. But the former Minister for Finance, Akonde, that woman, she came on, on public, she came and said that 55% of the VAT is generated from Lagos State. How I was 60%? She, as the Minister for Finance, said it was 55%. You see, we were not that wrong, 55 to 60%. Fashola said that Tinka Port generated 2 trillion naira. We estimated this as YYF as 4 trillion. So when we were looking at this, no one has been able to do the research of how many people that were killed between 1962 and 1963, except the YYF. And we look at all these findings. I use my brain as an economist. We know the number of houses that were destroyed. We know the number of injured people, 20,000 for houses destroyed, 50,000 for injured people. That was from the former governor of Oshun State, Mr. Akande. The books are still in the open. You can go and get a copy and read. If you read, your brain will be Awaken. And we said that look, on the average, at least we have about four people in per household. So if we estimated that out of these four people, at least one soul will be lost as a result of this crisis. We're talking on the average about 14,528 people that were killed. And then do you just close your eyes? Can black people kill 14,528 whites and the white would not revenge? Can the Scottish people kill 14,528 English and the English will not fight back? But why is it that they are always killing you, Yoruba, and you do not fight back? This is the reason why Igbo call you cowards. But this time around, we are going to decimate Igbo in Yoruba. They will leave, and if they refuse to leave, they shall be killed in Yoruba. There's no contest about it. Too many killings of the Yoruba must be Okay, too many. 
Why were the Yoruba mostly killed? The Yoruba people were mostly killed in four areas of Yoruba land between 1962 and 1964. They were killed in Lagos, Ibadan, Abekuta, and Undo Axis. It was massive protest in Undo because the Undo people they love our law. While my Maleri and Eziogu executed the order of the then Prime Minister, Tafara Balewa, to shoot on sight any protester in Lagos and across Yoruba land, it was Buhari who led the charge in Abdekuta at the material times. I have no record of the names of men who led the shoot, shooting at Ibadan and Undo Axis, but I'm sure they were non Yoruba. Their action led to the death of over 14,000 Yoruba people between 1963 and 1964. Buhari cannot dispute what I've said. He was promoted twice in 1963. The records are there. He was only 21 years old in 1963. Promoted twice into second lieutenant and platoon commander. Abekuta uh, Infantry Brigade. Buhari highest level of education then was 10 months Cadet training. Wari did not have WAHEC certificate. No, don't, don't forget about all the noise that they are talking about. Wari did not, did not go to secondary school. But today, he's the president. It cannot happen in a civilized society. He's the president. Now, Fuller and I say they will continue to continue to rule Europe. And when they don't have any wealth, they don't know what is coming. It is the English that are giving them that boldness. You will see how we're going to destroy English businesses across Europe. You will see. It is coming. So these were the principal actors. Tafar Baliwa and Zik, Mamaleri and Kaduna Eziogu and Buhari. They participated in the killing of 14,528 Europe. I have not discounted the action of the Yoruba themselves in these killings, but the vast majority of those who died were killed by Fulani and the Igbo. There was no proliferation of small arms and light weapons, like I said, in 1962-64, as we have today. So the Yoruba couldn't have possibly killed 14,000 of their whole people with sticks and cutlasses. The state under the Fulani and the Igbo was responsible for the death of the Yoruba people. That was what they've done. Folks, I think you appreciate what May 29 is all about. It is Otman Danfodius Day. We reject May 29. And one thing I want you to take away from this is this. Since independence, the evil have always worked with the full time to suppress and subjugate the Yoruba people. Under two years of independence, the Igbo, together with the Fulani, declared a state of emergency on the Yoruba people. They declare a state of emergency on Western region, a region where they are not from. When you declare a state of emergency, they will be brought back. They know that they were not living in Western region, yet two foreigners gang up together and declare a state of emergency on our own region. They now put their son, my Maleri and Kaduna Eziogu, in charge of this operation. They then back their operation up with a shoot on site order. And in the process, they slaughtered 14,528 Yoruba people. We have not revenge for this. And our generation must now have to revenge for this. We must avenge for their deaths. This is the reason why evil call us cowards. We must chase out evil from Yoruba land. We must take every single market under the command and control of evil in Yoruba land, particularly in Ibadan, in Lagos, the entire Lagos, in Abekuta, in Oshobo, in Adoikit, in our state capitals, all across Yoruba land. Evil are everywhere in our space. 
our villages, the evil are destroying it and they are sleeping with our women there. They are spreading their siblings. That is what they have been saying. We must stop the evil. This is the first priority towards getting the Yoruba nation of our dream back. We must decimate evil in Yoruba. Land. We must reduce them. They have refused to return to their space. They have always supported the political interest of the Fulani. This is the time to decimate them. They call us cows because we have continued to indulge their nonsense, their criminality. So that is why they have the boldness to continue to do what they are doing. We've continued to do this. So we must reduce evil from Yoruba. Now, as we celebrate Easter, I will take one minute to remember those who were killed by the Igbo and Fulani between 1962 and 1964. There was nothing like the Afra war then. Igbo first started killing us in conjunction with the Awusa Fulani. It's a pain in my heart that as a nation, the Yoruba, we have allowed too many deaths of our people in the hands of foreigners. So guys, I'm going to have to observe a two minutes, a one minute silence in honor of the Yoruba that were killed and my generation who are bent for their deaths. Thank you, guys. Yeah, it's, uh, thank you so much, guys, for, for joining us today. It is so painful that so many Yoruba have been killed by the evil and Fulani, and they continue to kill us without our leaders doing anything about that. It's so painful in my heart that the two most modern area on the food that we have so appointed in Europe and were killed by the Igbo and Fulani, respectively. Ndadoki Akintola, the first modern area on the food, was killed by the Igbo on January 15, 1966. The Yoruba nation has not avenged for his death. Then the Fulani and the Awusa, the murdered in Pio Abiola, our second area on the was arrested and they murdered him. And we have yet to fight and kill in revenge for that. We now have the third area on the Kakanfu, the person of Iba Ghani Adams. And this is the time for us to avenge for all the death of the Yoruba. So I want to call all the young Yoruba, like we said yesterday, EFCC officials in Yoruba land who are Awusa Fulani, we want to kill them. Because we cannot accept to be suppressed and subjugated. We cannot accept them to be killing our youth in the name of Yahweh Yahweh. We have enough qualified, well educated Yoruba who could be so appointed as EFCC official working in Yoruba land. Why must they bring Fulani into our space? So I want to encourage young Yoruba. If we do not kill these people, they will continue to kill us. And to all the police in Yoruba land who are not Yoruba, who have been involved 
in extrajudicial killing of the Yoruba nation. I want to encourage young Yoruba, this is the time for you to kill them. Do not negotiate. I'm not asking you to kill Yoruba policemen working in Yoruba land, but Igbo and Aousa Fulani policemen working in Yoruba land, we must kill them. We must kill them. And we must revenge. And we must also avenge for all the Yoruba that has been killed by these foreigners in our space. They do not wish, they do not wish that we have a return to regional government. Our generation must now kill. That is the only thing our generation has been born for. Because everything good has been taken away from us. And when you're being killed every now and then by foreigners and you don't do anything, they call you cowards. It is only as a matter of fact, it is only a coward that will see his children unemployed, but Fulani are the one in charge of our ports and our waterways when our children have no job. That is the attribute of a coward. It is only a coward that will see his children unemployed, but all across Europe, Fulani are in charge of our police, Fulani are in charge of our military, Fulani in charge of our immigration, Fulani in charge of our prison, Fulani in charge of our custom. Full and control all the federal government jobs when young Yoruba, well educated graduates, do not have jobs. Only cowards wear service. So you see, the full and you know what they are doing. So they will never want a Yoruba to be president of Nigeria. They will never support a proper Yoruba as the president of Nigeria. If they must allow a Yoruba, they will look for a Yoruba that is a compromised Yoruba, like Tunde Bakari, whose father is Sani Arewa Jr. from Shokoto, who has always pretended all his life that he's Yoruba, but he's not Yoruba, but he has always been against the Yoruba political interest. Fulani will not want someone like Tinubu, someone like Oshibadu, someone like Fashola to be president of Nigeria. What we speak to you, Fashola knows more than this. What we are exposing to you, Kirubu, with his position, knows so much about Nigeria. Oshibado, as a professor of law, is well vast than what we are giving out to you. Fulani will never desire for them to rule Nigeria. Igbo do not want them to rule Nigeria. Because if they do, the same way the Fulani have abused the power of the presidency in this country since 1966, Yoruba will do justice. Yoruba will do justice, return the country back to regional government or break it apart. They don't want you to control your own wealth. So Fulani will not hand over to Tinubu or any proper Yoruba for that matter. So what do we do? We must fight. Tinubu is going to his 70. You don't expect him to fight. It is young people everywhere in the world who fight to change their own life. So this is the time for you and I to fight. We are not going to fight with our fist. We are going to fight with chemical and biological weapons. We are going to fight with guns. We are going to fight with bombs. We are going to destroy the cash cow of the Fulani. Our fight must be strategic. Fulani do not just get to power. Boom! Buhari has been contesting the election three times before Tinubu supported him in 2015. Buhari has always been winning in the northwest and northeast. With that vote, he has been unable to be president. To be president in Nigeria, Fulani always get the support of the Igbo. Fulani cannot be president of Nigeria so solely they need the support of the Igbo because the Igbo are too many in Yoruba land yet they do not support our political interests we Yoruba would like to be president of Nigeria too because everybody wants to live and die in our space so in return they must make us the president because we are the owner of the world we are the economic backbone of Nigeria but the Igbo they want to come into our space at the same time, they do not want to support our political interests. We must kill them. If they refuse to leave our space, we must slaughter them. We must slaughter them. We must kill them. They've always been voting for land. This is the time for us to kill them if they refuse to leave our space. 
if they refuse to leave our space. Kawusa, Fulani, and Yibo, they do not generate any wealth that is adding value to Nigeria. I have said to you, the oil wealth we speak about in Nigeria belong to the Yoruba people. 20% of the revenue of NNPC is coming from Yoruba land. The remaining 80% is coming from the South South. South South is not one nation. Yoruba land is one nation, yet we contribute 20% of the NNPC revenue. South South has about 10 different nations Edo, Urobo, Isoko, Ika, Ikwan, Ijo. Ogoni, Efriki Bibio, and the others. Together, they contributed the 80% of NMPC revenue. If you slap that 80% amongst them, the highest is the Joe Nation, contributing only 16%, when the Yoruba Nation is contributing 20%. So it is our oil money. The oil money belongs to Yoruba. Fulani do not have oil. Igbo do not have oil. But these guys are taking out the largest share of our oil. We must shut down Lagos. If we do not shut down Lagos, forget it. Your life will remain miserable. The Igbo and Fulani do not wish for a proper Yoruba to be president. All the power that has been attributed to Fulani were because they were in power. Take the power of the presidency away from Fulani. Fulani experiments cannot kill us in Yoruba land anymore. Fulani SARS cannot kill us in Yoruba land anymore. Take the power of the presidency away from the Fulani. Fulani cannot control our custom anymore. Take the power of the presidency away from the Fulani. Fulani cannot control our waterways anymore. Take the power of the presidency away from Fulani. Fulani cannot control our military in Yoruba land anymore. Take the power of the presidency away from the Fulani. Fulani cannot control our immigration. Fulani cannot control our taxes. Tinobu is not stupid. Fashola is not crazy. Oshibado is not an idiot. They know the world. The Igbo will say, oh, we have Tinubu, is the national leader of APC. We have Fashola, double minister. We have Oshiba, the vice president. They are not the president of Nigeria. If they are president, Nigeria will return back to the general government. And the Yoruba will never be subjugated anymore. So the Igbo are our number one problem. We have said to them and we have said to the world, we don't want Igbo in our space anymore. They commit crime. They are killing our people. They are raping our women. They sell fake products. All the shops, all the businesses they own in Yoruba land are proceeds of crimes. They are looting our banks. They have destroyed the fabric of our society. We are said to them to leave. For them to refuse to leave, the option is to kill them. We will massacre them across Yoruba land. You cannot live in my space. And you, you do not support my political interest, you do not support my economic interest, you have one choice. Leave. If you refuse, you shall be treated the same way the white in the United States treated the Japanese in 1942. So, young Yoruba, we must keep evil off Yoruba land. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful. I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.